Damon John, welcome to our show Profiles. Thanks for having me. Pleasure meeting you today. For our viewers, you are the, known as the godfather of urban fashion, thanks in part to your, your role as the creator and founder of FUBU. But you're also one of the stars of ABC's hit show, Shark Tank. Yes. Uh, for those who haven't seen the show, uh, what is Shark Tank? Well, Shark Tank is where myself and four other individuals, um, pretty much all of us have had the rags to riches story, mm -hmm. um, and we have some money to invest. Basically, what we do is we get pitched by people who either have an idea, have a currently running business, mm -hmm. but either way, they need cash. And the banks have turned them down, and they're on their second, third mortgage. You know, they already mm -hmm. put grandma in the old folks' home, can't pay for her anymore. So basically, sure. they now are coming to us to pitch your idea and hopefully we'll invest. Now let's backtrack a little bit, talk about your background, which is quite re remarkable. Uh, you graduated from waiting tables, I read, at the Red Lobster to being CEO of the multi-million dollar enterprise FUBU. And what I was really astonished to read is that you started with $40. Yeah, I couldn't find a certain hat that I, uh, I wanted to buy. And I went all over town looking for it, and I finally found it. And the hat cost about $20. And I realized yeah. that I can sew this hat. So I went and bought raw fabric, okay. and I made a bunch of the hats. Yeah. And I went out, and I, I remember it was uh, the Friday prior to Easter Sunday, uh, 1992. Yeah. And I sold them all on Jamaica Avenue, and I made about $800 selling it, those <laughs> hats. And then I did, I read the story. Uh, what happened on the way home? On the way home, I was really excited. I was counting the money, and I hit somebody in the back of their car. And obviously, you know how much it costs to eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Oh, that's a great story. Yeah. Uh, now, eventually, you flew out to Vegas uh, for a trade show, uh, even though you couldn't afford a booth, and somehow landed three hundred thousand dollars in orders. Yeah. Well, you know, I was fortunate enough to grow up in Hollis, Queens, and a lot of um, rappers. Yeah, uh, sure. Grow there, so. So I took photos of LL Cool J getting into a limousine one mm. time. I put a FUBU hat on him. I stayed outside of his house for about oh, 18 boy. hours. Um, and I took a shot of him. And I sent that picture to all the specialty stores that I can find in all the magazines all over the country. Wow. And then so when I went to Vegas, I stayed in the Mirage, which is about five miles away from the trade show. Yeah. But because of that picture, and for about three years, I had about eight shirts, and these eight FUBU t-shirts I had, I would go and put it on a video and take it back and dry clean it and take it back and, and keep doing that. So I had about 30 videos rotating. These flyers went to all the stores and then before I know it, we were all in this uh, little hotel room, smaller yeah, than yeah. this area probably. And all the buyers just came in and they just started writing orders. Oh, and uh, you know, I wrote $300,000 in orders. FUBU stands for? FUBU stands for For Us, By Us. And you said uh, about your early success, you said what made FUBU take off was the frustration in the fashion market for African American people. And, and my question is, does that frus frustration still exist today? No. It's no. gone. You see, around that time, uh, Timberland had made a statement that said something to the effect of uh, we don't make our boots for drug dealers, and I wasn't a drug dealer, and we mm -hmm. spent a lot of money on our footwear. Now, FUBU was never for African Americans only. It was for a segment of the market, and it was a lifestyle that was obviously created by the music business. You know, right. but that was a lot of times a, a common misunderstanding that FUBU was solely for African Americans, but if sure. it was, then I would have been guilty of the same racism and prejudice that had created the brand itself. It was about a lifestyle. But, you know, I also was happy that the African Americans felt that there was something for them to own, but FUBU was about anybody who loved our generation, our music, our lifestyle. Many people in business advise frequently the key to success is never give up. Do you, do you agree with that? Never give up, well, I would say desire. I would say there's nothing, mm -hmm. there's nothing mm -hmm. like in luck. There, yeah. There's no luck. There is desire meets preparation yeah, sure. and timing. Uh, but I think that the key to success also is to learn the business, no matter what it is. So mm. if you don't, if you don't want to go to the library, you don't want to take a course, you go intern someplace, you go do something to learn the business because, mm -hmm. you know, there's obviously, uh, you know, a track record and things that you yeah. need to know. Well said. Uh, what's the best piece of advice uh, that you could share with uh, aspiring entrepreneurs uh, who may be watching the show tonight? I always say a couple of things. I always say really try to zig when people zag. 
Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Educate yourself because, right. you know, as I always say, uh, the only thing more expensive than education is ignorance. Right. And um, <laughs> Robert, one of the sharks, he mm -hmm. made a statement the other day that was very, very uh, accurate. It said, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and most people underestimate what they can accomplish in 10. And um, I think um, do something you love. Just want to say one more time, Damon John, creator and founder of FUBU, also the star of ABC's Shark Tank. It's a great show, and I wish you many uh, good years with that, with Thank that you. program. Appreciate Thanks for stopping by today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My, my pleasure. Right. Thank you.